Welcome back. One of Florida's fastest growing communities will soon have a brand new downtown. The West Villages in Northport are releasing plans to build, in essence, a downtown similar to Lakewood Ranch, but in Northport. ABC 7's Christopher Brandon joins us now live with what those plans include. Christopher? Oh, good evening. One of the biggest uh, components here in getting this whole downtown area to rise from this empty field was getting a grocery anchor store to come in. Now, today we learned that store is going to be a Publix. It certainly doesn't look like much now, but looking at this design plan is like looking into the future. It's a Main Street. It's, it's it, it, I'll call it more of a traditional Main Street. Traditional in the sense of street parking and retail business with perhaps some sibling rivalry. Are we talking Lakewood Ranch in the West Villages? I would say it's better than Lakewood Ranch. West Villages General Manager Marty Black hopes to use Lakewood Ranch as a springboard in how to enhance a downtown experience. In just subtle things like how wide the sidewalks are so you could have greater areas for outdoor dining and covered dining. But to make all of this happen, the West Villages has needed a grocery store anchor. They've been tight-lipped about it, but now we know that store will be Publix. Already, we've already been people calling us. We heard about the Braves, West Villages. How do we go about bringing business from out of town? Northport Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Bill Gunnan is noticeably thrilled. Instead of them having to go south to Fort Myers and north to Sarasota, this is going to bring a whole venue of entertainment for them to stay home, which means they'll spend dollars here and keep the tax dollars here. Northport commissioners this week approved the first phase of planning. There will be more to go. Just last week, they approved the Braves Spring Training Stadium. You'll now have an over $100 million spring training facility with sports uh, rehabilitation programs and other community events going on. So looking into the future here, we're going to have just beyond the camera a 6,000 seat stadium complete with practice fields. Then just right here will be the Publix, the retail shopping center, but all of this will not be complete for another five to 10 years. Live in Venice, or excuse me, Northport, Christopher Brantley, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you so much, Christopher. The White House and congressional Republicans are proposing to overhaul the nation's tax code, but it is not clear yet exactly what they want to change. More details are forthcoming, but the new proposals call for slashing the tax on corporations, now 35% to 20%, reducing the number of tax brackets from seven to just three for individuals and families, and doubling the standard deduction for families that would mean no income tax whatsoever on the first $24,000 of income. The administration is also pushing back on charges wealthy Americans stand to benefit. Trump is proposing eliminating the estate tax. Trump's economic advisor could not confirm whether any middle class families could possibly pay more. A warm welcome at the U.S. Capitol today for House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. Scalise making an appearance on the House floor for the first time since being critically injured in a gun attack back in June. The Louisiana Republican spoke out about his ordeal and praised the doctors who treated him. Scalise said they did a phenomenal job and, quote, put me back together again. Scalise and three other people were shot, two others injured, when a gunman opened fire on a GOP baseball team during practice for a charity game. Scalise was shot once in his left hip and suffered significant internal damage. The attacker was killed in a gunfire exchange with Capitol Police. For the first time since her shocking resignation a few weeks ago, we're now hearing why Sarasota's Alex Miller suddenly resigned as a state representative. Miller runs a local medical supplies business, but decided last year to run for state office. After serving one session in Tallahassee, Miller said she had enough. In an exclusive interview with ABC7, Miller told us that she found the position was more time consuming than she realized, and she also didn't like the internal politics. And so I thought to myself, you know, who, who needs me more in this last year? Do my children need me more, or does the state need me more? And I started to conclude that it was probably in everyone's best interest that I resign and have somebody fill my last year of my term, which would, in essence, if it's a good candidate, help them with their next term and so forth. Huh. So after sort of making the decision that I wasn't going to run next year, committee assignments were also issued. and. I had been removed from my two favorite committees, which were my healthcare committees, and I have an entire history and um, 
like my entire career has been in healthcare. I spent four years on the hospital board and um, 22 years in medical distribution. So they had done that, I was told, and I don't know this for sure, but it was a, a punishment in essence for voting um, a certain way that they did not like in a couple of votes. Well, you can hear that entire exclusive interview with Alex Miller on our ABC7 Facebook page, and you can also watch a complete discussion of Miller's fast exit tonight on ABC7 News at 7. All right, let's get another check on our weather now. Bob Harrigan watching something in the tropics tonight, Bob. That's right. Maria and Lee are heading out, and we're watching now what uh, could turn into a tropical depression or possibly even storm. It's uh, still a lot of uncertainty as to how big this thing is going to be. It's not going to be a big storm, but uh, it could become a tropical depression within the next, let's uh, say, a couple of days. Right now, it's a disturbance down here south of Cuba. Water temperature is very warm, but upper level winds are not favorable, uh, all that favorable for a huge development, although it will be marginal uh, for the next couple of days. And then after day three, it becomes uh, very hostile for this to develop and strengthen. So good news on that front. But bad news is that we are going to see a lot of rainfall as the system moves to the north. Indications are that we'll see a low pressure area developing in the Florida Straits here soon, and that will push off to the north. And then there's a chance it could become a tropical depression or possibly a tropical storm with a 50% chance in the next uh, five days, 30% chance in the next two days. We saw that with Emily, though. Didn't take much, but less than 24 hours for that to develop, even when it has had just a 30% chance of developing uh, way back when. Well, as far as the forecast models are concerned, there's not a lot of model data yet on this because the low pressure really hasn't formed quite yet. Uh, but the models that do show it have it moving off to the north basically on Friday. And then eventually a lot of them take off in different directions. Some keep it on that north northerly course while others take it off to the right, while some take it off to the left there. So we'll just keep a watch on it. What we're looking for is the possibility of some rainfall from it, and some of that could be heavy at times. Right now we have a few spotty showers around. We'll talk about those right now in just a few minutes from now. Back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, Bob. A follow-up tonight on an Alaska man charged with killing five people and wounding six others in a South Florida airport. Lawyers representing Esteban Santiago say he is mentally fit to proceed in that case, even though he's being treated for schizophrenia. Santiago pleaded not guilty to a 22-count indictment in the January 6th shooting at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. After the shooting, Santiago told FBI agents that he acted under government mind control and then claimed inspiration by ISIS. The Justice Department is considering whether to seek the death penalty in this case. There is an urgent humanitarian crisis unfolding in Puerto Rico in the wake of Hurricane Maria. People in the U.S. have donated massive amounts of supplies to the, the uh, island, but are frustrated that they cannot get their shipments to the island of Puerto Rico. An obscure shipping law that's called the Jones Act has been seen as a hindrance to those relief efforts. The law forbids foreign ships from transporting goods from one point to another in a U.S. territory. Under pressure today, President Trump waived that law. We were focusing on in the first days is making sure that we had the airports and the ports starting to clear so that we could get the continual amount of supplies into Puerto Rico. Vital aid is stranded at the country's main port. Food, water, medical supplies all sitting in cargo containers. Officials in Puerto Rico say there are not enough drivers to deliver that aid. Well, the U.S. Coast Guard continues to help the people in Puerto Rico affected by Hurricane Maria. This video shows the Coast Guard passing out supplies yesterday. Now, overall, they have distributed over 3,000 meals and 4,500 liters of water. The governor there says Puerto Rico is in an emergency mode and that island and federal officials are doing everything possible to help. Still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, we've all seen nutrition labels on the packaging of foods we eat, but are we really digesting what it all means? We'll have the answer next in HealthSmart. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. of lump liver drolls. We went to a real school to show that bullying should be history. You monkey elbowed pockmarks. 
What a bunch of beef witted pig nuts. On Monday, October 2nd, let's all stand up for World Day of Bullying Prevention by rocking a blue shirt. Together, let's make bullying a thing of the past. Go blue and get your blue shirt at stompoutbullying.org. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Why settle for less? Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Nobody beats Subaru in service quality, vehicle quality, and overall quality. And ALG named Subaru the 2017 top brand for residual value. Now lease the most fuel efficient vehicle in its class, a new Subaru Outback for just $239 a month. Or get 0% financing with complimentary maintenance included. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Watch your Suncoast News at 6 on your streaming device for a chance to win a $50 visa. It's easy. Just watch weekdays at 6 for the word of the week. Then enter the word at mysuncoast.com for your shot at a $50 visa. We'll pick the winner each week. Good luck. When it comes to nutrition labels, you see plenty of words and numbers every day. But are you really digesting what they mean? With more, here's ABC News contributor Lana Zach. Whether on a bag of cookies or a box of high fiber cereal, one thing you'll find on any packaged food item is the nutritional label. The FDA has required the recognizable black and white nutrition facts panel on nearly all packaged foods since 1990. But are these labels really helping Americans make healthy food choices? Well, too often, the answer may be no. A team of researchers at the FDA, NIH, and Tufts University surveyed the nutritional facts knowledge of more than 3,000 people. When they gave these subjects an ice cream nutritional label, nearly one in four couldn't say how many calories there were in the entire container. Likewise, more than two out of five could not calculate the percentage daily value of calories in a single serving. The researchers also found that those who had the least understanding of these labels tended to admit to higher intake of sugar sweetened soda. The FDA is already planning a nutrition label revamp, but since these changes are still months away, the best thing you can do is to be a more informed consumer. Learn what these labels mean and make sure they matter when it comes to what goes into your shopping cart. With this Medical Minute, I'm Lana Zak, ABC News. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, we had some rain around Lakewood Ranch. It's starting to wind down now. As expected, these storms are starting to tap into that drier air as they start to get a little stronger. Although in Northport, some heavier rainfall there. You saw that brief shower uh, right there near the town center. A little bit more rain to the west thereof. Heavy rain down to our south. This is what we're in store for over the weekend. This moisture is going to ride northward, and that will be in place both on Friday and into Saturday. And then an area of low pressure could be a little stronger along the east coast, it looks like right now. That's what the thinking is. And you can see that activity pretty heavy in South Florida and over the Bahamas right now near Lake Okeechobee. Not much going on here right now. That storm near Northport generating a couple of lightning strikes just in the last half hour. The one over Lakewood Ranch is really weakened now. It's down just to a light rain shower. That should be winding down here soon. But the outflow from this particular cell will generate some other isolated storms later on. I mentioned that light rainfall right there at University Park way and then spreading northward to Whitfield Avenue. Uh, that, as I said, is about just about over. A couple of lightning strikes, though, near Northport and 
near warm mineral springs, pushing off to the west right now into in eastern portions of Venice and eventually down into South Venice. You can see this warm mineral springs right there, South Biscayne Drive stretching over to Sumner, although Sumner you're starting to see a little less rainfall there now. It was heavier just about a half hour ago. We have this upper level low pressure system which continues to spin uh, just offshore of Sarasota. You see it right there. That's going to inhibit this storm. Uh, that could develop uh, pr pretty much uh, from being a big tropical storm. But uh, right now, it looks like the biggest concern with it would be the heavy rainfall, which could cause some serious flooding here. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Heat index now at 97, the dew point way up there at 76. It was uh, certainly a very warm fall day today. The high was 91, well above the average of 88. 96, the record set in 1925. And the ground is saturated. We've had this month uh, over 11 and a half inches of rainfall. And it looks as though we could see... Uh, additional inches of rain if this thing uh, does develop and we think it has a pretty good chance of doing so. Temperatures will be into the upper 80s but cool down once the storms start tomorrow. That rain chance increasing tomorrow especially for Sarasota and Charlotte counties a little less up into Manatee County but still there'll be some there as a result of the moisture slowly working its way northward right now. Well there is Maria. It's heading off to the east now away from the United States and also Lee doing the same thing. Those two storms will merge actually and then uh, head off toward London. Now we are looking at this, a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity down here into the western portion of the Caribbean. And look at this, this is a pretty impressive area of rainfall too over the islands. To keep an eye on that, there's no real threat of it developing because there's a trough of low pressure here. They're kind of ripping everything apart, but it'll be working off to the west in the future. This is the European model. It shows the storms leaving and the one coming up from Cuba, it develops and takes off to the northeast. So the European model not quite sold yet on the system moving up along the east coast of Florida and then moving across the state as a very weak low. It leaves something behind here, the European does, and that would bring us the rainfall, as I mentioned, as we move into the weekend. Right now, temperatures are fall-like in places like Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, all into the 60s and 70s there. Much warmer, though, over the deep south, 91 now in Atlanta. For boaters tomorrow, looks to be pretty good. A light chop in the bays and inland waters. Seas running two feet or less out there. Tides up coming. High tide will be at 10.02 and sunset at 7.20. The forecast tonight, isolated storms possible, otherwise partly cloudy. Tomorrow, 40% chance for scattered showers and storms late in the day. And we'll see the clouds increasing too late in the day as that moisture works northward. Rain chances bumping up on Saturday and Sunday and Monday. It will turn breezy too on Sunday and Monday. We're not looking anything too significant, but still, it'll be there. And then a chance for showers Tuesday through Wednesday. Back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. Time now to check your first alert traffic. We're learning more about why you're seeing so much red on the map. Drivers should avoid the I-75 and University Parkway area. According to Sarasota Fire and Rescue, a contractor's truck overturned and is hanging over the bridge there. The driver was able to get out okay and is not hurt. Fire officials say hydraulic fluid is leaking out of the truck, but it has since been cleaned up. Again, you may want to avoid this area. We'll have more on that accident coming up at 6 o'clock. Facebook is helping get Puerto Rico back online after Hurricane Maria. The social networking company is sending its connectivity team to the island where they'll deliver emergency telecommunications assistance. Facebook will join cell phone providers who are also working to get the island reconnected. CEO Mark Zuckerberg says Facebook will also donate $1.5 million to organizations that are helping to bring supplies to those in need. Well, entertainment news is next. Stay with us. The Alfa Romeo Stelvio takes the modern compact luxury crossover and injects it with personality. Every crossover should be this good to drive. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. 
Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. It's Willamania at the Player Center as the Will Rogers Follies takes the stage September 27th. Part homespun humor and part Ziegfeld Follies, this toe-tapping Tony Award musical is the start of our wild Broadway series. So call the players at 365-2494 or visit us at theplayers.org. You need to catch Willamania. Watch your Suncoast News at 6 on your streaming device for a chance to win a $50 visa. It's easy. Just watch weekdays at 6 for the word of the week. Then enter the word at mysuncoast.com for your shot at a $50 visa. We'll pick the winner each week. Good luck. I went in skeptical and came away impressed. Stelvio can spring from a standstill to 60 miles per hour in 5.4 seconds, a segment best. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Well, an Emmy award-winning actress reveals she has breast cancer. Julia Louis-Dreyfus took to Twitter today writing, one in eight women get breast cancer, today I'm the one. The actress says she's lucky to have the support of family and friends along with fantastic insurance. She closed her tweet by saying people need to fight all cancers and make universal health care a reality. Earlier this month, the 56-year-old took home her sixth consecutive Emmy win for best actress in a comedy for her role in Veep. This may be the year Justin Timberlake makes his big return to the Super Bowl halftime show. Reports say the singer will take part in Pepsi's Super Bowl 52 show in Minneapolis this February. The NFL has not made an official announcement yet, but if Timberlake headlines the show, his return will come more than a decade after his part in Janet Jackson's infamous wardrobe malfunction. Remember that? The FCC fined CBS $550,000 for the snafu, but a federal appeals court threw it out. And Britain's Prince Harry had a little distraction from watching the Invictus games in Toronto. The prince was caught on camera taunting a little girl with some popcorn, as you can see right there. Her father, a former royal engineer, is a Paralympian who was participating in the games. The pair were in the stands for the UK versus Denmark volleyball match. Looks like he's getting along quite well with her. <laughs> he's had good practice with his uh, nieces his and nieces nephews. And, nephews. Yeah. <laughs> and more on the way. He's a natural. Yep. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back with more news and weather. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. Suncoast doctors are getting involved to fight the opioid epidemic. I'm Joey Panic on Suncoast View. We'll learn about drug-free Sarasota and how physicians are spreading the word about prescription drug abuse. We'll see a fall fashion line that makes sure we won't all show up in the same dress, plus a Van Wazel preview of 50 years of rock and roll, and Gold Rush Barbecue joins us in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes, <laughs> B, console her, Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.